bell driver. This is certainly not the place to bring up a little child. I may as well tell you, Alice, that I mean to be quite firm. Well, this is a nice time to call, I must say. Kindly allow me to see my niece. You can't, dearie. It's started. Oh, well, you'd better go and wait in the parlour. I don't know what father would have said. His own granddaughter. Florence always did down beautifully. Yes. I don't think we should have come. It is interfering between man and wife. Our own niece, Florence, and a drunken good-for-nothing who thought she had money. She forgave him for that. But he's still the same man. We've been over all this. It isn't Florence. She made her choice. It's the child now. That is our responsibility. If she'd let us take it. She will, if she has any mother's instinct at all. Anyway, we must be firm. She must understand. What can Charlie Rayburn do for any child? If it's a boy, we'll send him to a good school, then to a university like father. Suppose it's a girl. She will have the best of everything. And a good husband to take care of her after we are gone. She'll grow up to be a fine, God-fearing woman. It'd be wonderful. Yes. Mary, Alice, we're doing the Lord's work tonight. You don't think I'm going to die, do you? No, dearie. Not with me to look after you. I do hope it'll be a girl. Girls can be more of a handful than what boys can. Not my girl, she won't. I wonder what I'll call her. Well, names cost nothing, even in these hard times. I think I'll call her Ginny. Ginny? What a funny name. There's something out of the ordinary to follow, like Ruby or Pearl. Ginny Pearl. Ginny Pearl. Well, what's it going to be? Mild and bitter. No, I mean boy or girl. Oh. Well, what do you think? I think it's going to be a little girl. I hope not. Why? One woman in the arse is quite enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Say if you're not there at the time. I can't go without Virgo. Well, I'll be furious if I was there. Mm. Ah, there he goes. The greatest little clown in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I always at this time used to say, well, here's goodbye till next year. But this time, I'm afraid it's going to be goodbye forever. And you, my little friends, I shall be missing you most of all. How I wish you all could have been born into the Harlequin Aid, into that wonderful magic street of Harlequin and Columbine where nobody ever grows old except the poor old clown. I don't think you quite understand the temptations of a young girl, Florence. Don't I? I think I know a sight more about them than what you do. Wouldn't you want her to be sure of everlasting happiness? Well, I'd like her to be a good girl, yes. Push, push, push. Here Thank heavens, yes, Charlie. Man. So hide your head beneath the clothes. He'll catch you if he can. Hello, Flurry. <coughs> that it? <coughs> hey? You come and kiss your daughter, Charlie Rayburn. Can Joey come in? Of course he can, bless him. Come in, Joey. God bless you, my dear. My wife's aunt is the Mrs. Horner, Mr. Joseph Virgo, our lodger. What are the three witches doing here? They came to adopt our Jimmy. Adopt her? What, her? I should say so. Think twice, Charlie Rayburn, before you refuse. Think before you condemn your child to everlasting damnation. 
Think of her growing up in wickedness and idle places, kissing and waltzing, making love and theatre going, and becoming a prey to evil and lascivious men. You sound as if you were cursing my Ginny. I'm warning you. You're wasting your time. No one's going to take my Ginny and put a lot of ideas into her head. She's going to be jolly and merry and laugh whenever she wants to. Alice, Mary, it's time we went. And she'll be happy, do you hear? So don't come wagging your bonnets at my child again. Good night, Florence. <coughs> I see the footprints of Satan in this room. Come off it, that's your own muddy feet. Mrs. Nightman, bring some glasses. Look, I do believe our Ginny's laughing. What about a little drop to wet the baby's head? Oh, I don't think I ought. Port wine, dearie. It's a tonic. How about you, you old tartar? I don't mind if I do. Just a little drop, Flory. Come on, Joey, give us a toast. To the death of a clown and the birth of a columbine. <laughs> Charlie Rayburn, how much longer is this going to go on? What? You knew where Ginny was. You heard the noise. I didn't. I was reading. Can't leave you alone for a minute. Can't even go to the back of the house without... Hey, don't go on like that, Flory. Not in front of Ginny. Oh, and why not in front of Ginny, pray? She'll have to cope with you one day. Flory. Why shouldn't you dance outside? Where's the arm in it? You don't know the first thing about daughters. I do. Shut up. <coughs> Darling. I don't know why I've stayed with you so long. Sorry, I love you, but you've got no sense of humour. Perhaps I've lost it. What's going to become of our children? Grow up, have kids of their own, get old, die, like the rest of us. No, you can't make me laugh. <coughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Where are you going? Nowhere. Far enough. Nowhere to go, now that uh, now Joey's dead. There's always the Mason's arms. Well, I don't go there very often. I won't be long. Just, uh, just take the air. What's going to become of you, Jenny Pearl? You're much too beautiful already for this wicked world. You'll end up on the stage. I haven't the strength to prevent it. The daughter of a drunkard. You poor child. What have you done to deserve your future? What have you done? Ashamed of? I'm proud. My daughter, Ginny Pearl. That new girl, sir. She's not bad, you know. Not bad. And not good. But material for a prima ballerina. Next to Irene. Ah. Yes, well, I saw it first, old man. You shouldn't have pointed her out then. Oh, yes. This is her mother. So you see where the kid gets her looks, eh? <laughs> this is her sister, little May, my youngest. She never make a dancer. 
Hurt her foot when she was a baby, never got over it. Like a little goddess. Like a little... Hey, what do they call those old Roman women what live in trees? I'm not coming out with you again. Spoil sport! make my usual mistake. Mustn't overdo it. Evening, boys. Oh, dear. Oh, Ginny, this is Jack Danby, Ginny Pearl. Very glad to meet you. I have so admired your dancing, Miss Pearl. So flamboyant, so resilient. There's <laughs> old Jack for you, always overdoing it. <laughs> Flatter is only satisfying when it's overdone. Ah, uh, a filly after my own heart. I feel I should warn you, Miss Pearl. My brother fences himself as a perfect devil with the girls. Well, I'll soon tell him if he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw a stitchy. Charlie Raven, if you had any strength of character, you'd go down there and bring your daughter back home. Oh, what do I do then? Give her a good hiding. What's up, Charlie? She's young. She's enjoying herself. Oh, come on home. I told you we didn't ought to have come. Then we wouldn't have had no cause to row. Isn't that just like you? A straight up, boy. She never even saw us, did she? Never forgive her. She wouldn't spy on her. Charlie. 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 I heard you the first time. Ginny's late. No later than usual. You don't seem very worried about it. I'm not. Ginny can look after herself. Hmm, can she? I wonder. What do you mean by that? I didn't much like the look of those two lardy da fellas outside the stage door tonight. You want to talk to Ginny? You mind your own business. Now, look here, Florrie. Now, listen to me, Charlie Rayburn. No one's going to run Ginny down in front of me. Not even you. Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. You're up late. Now, see here, Miss Ginny Pearl. I'll not have you staying out at all hours running around with fancy men. I've told you about it before. I don't want to have to tell you about it again. You will be ashamed of yourself, my That's girl. That's enough out of you, Charlie. That'll be enough out of both of you. What's come over you all of a sudden? Anybody would think I'd never been out before. It seems to me you're never happy unless you're about with boys. Well, who else am I to go about with? Come on, I hope you wash up. Wash up? Listen to her. Wash up, indeed. She's never touched a dish in her life without breaking it. Afraid of getting her hands rough, that's what it is. Afraid of doing some good, honest work for a change. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. Honest or not, I bring the money into the house, don't I? I'm not afraid of anything, Mother, and you know it. I'm not even afraid of growing old. I'll always be able to manage. I can't help being young and I can't help being pretty. I can't help wanting a good time. What's so unnatural about that? Yes, you're young and pretty. Forgive me, Ginny. You've got my eyes and a bit of my mouth. I was pretty too, you know. I'll say you was. And look where it led me. I could have married two dozen of them. They were all at my feet. You'd done much better marrying me. All much better, if I'd known. Promise me one thing, Ginny. Don't do anything foolish. Look before you leap. There are so many bad people around, so many people waiting to deceive you. You'd think they were respectable, many of them. Don't frighten the girl, Flo. Take more than that to frighten me, Dad. Oh, that's right. Listen to your father. Don't listen to me. I don't talk sense. I talk rubbish. I don't know. But I do. I'm sorry, Mother. Don't forget your old mother, Ginny. You're not old. You're lovely. You're still very lovely. Lovely. Yes, I used to be. You'll never understand about life until it's too late. 
Can't you see the way you're ruining poor May? That girl idolizes you. Can't you see what she goes through every time you go out gallivanting? You'll never understand until you've lost your looks like I have. And people will tell you you're still lovely. And you'll know what it's like to be hurt. Because it won't be true. It won't be true. Hey, I'll fly. What did I tell you? Hello, you're late again. No, don't you start. Mother blew up in smoke. Oh, why should she? Have a good time. Same as usual. You are in a bad way. Oh, May, isn't it awful? In 11 years, I'll be 30. What of it, you date? Do you think you'll look so very different? I'll feel and look an old woman. I don't think I'll feel any different when I'm 30. Or 50, for that matter. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, darling. Good morning, Mr. Sutton. Good morning. Any more inquiries? Not one. Oh, it's probably this awful dry heat wave. It started to rain. No, um, no sales yet? No. Well, now I come to think of it, there was an inquiry about you, Mr. Carson. No? An old lady wanted to know whether you were a professional artist. Well, uh, the critics haven't been in yet, sir, have they? They have, yes, except Mr. Dutt. Yes, but he's the only one that counts, isn't he? Correct. Mr. Dutt's a great critic. He finds out what the general opinion is and then contradicts it. Consequently, he's believed to have a mind of his own. He won't like the show. Why not? The other critics were pleased. You're not very encouraging, are you? Give me some cause to be, young man. Look at that. What? Look at those figures. Oh, Morris, you're becoming a crashing ball with your attractive women. I can make a superb Wharton of that one on the left. It's a subject I've always had in mind. I wonder who they are. <clears throat> now it's come on to rain. We'd have been home by now if you hadn't insisted upon that awful old Colonel Walpole staying with us all morning. Yes. But look what I've got out of it. Hmm. Not bad. Jealous? Maybe. Good morning, Mr. Dutt. Good morning. What did Watkins of the Morning Post think? I'm afraid he rather enjoyed the show. Oh, really? Though he detested this nude. Mm -hmm. He loathed that landscape mm -hmm. and uh, abominated this little still life. Really? Mr. Frank Castleton, Mr. Maurice Avery, Mr. Montgomery Dutt. What is that? Well, that's rather an entertaining little work by Maurice Avery. It's entitled The Spirit of the Dance. It's not very good. It's an excessively pretentious title for such an unassuming work. Don't be a date. I tell you, she couldn't. I oh, don't see why not. I think she's very pretty, really. Oh, look again, silly. She's not a dancer, she's a contortionist. No girl could do that without falling flat on a bustle. Oh, you always know everything, don't you? Well, good gracious, Irene, you've only got to try. One foot's here, the other one's up there, and then the arms go... Oh! You might have hurt yourself. Well, thank you. Don't mention it. Who is the perpetrator of this distortion of nature? I am the sculptor. You? Young man, go away and learn your craft before dragging me from my club to pass judgment on you. Your work is unworthy of the scorn I lavish only on the distinctly promising. It grieves me, Stadham, to find in your gallery such a dreadful... Well, I hope you're satisfied. Who is that? Only the most influential art critic in England. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what's the use of being sorry? He was busy liking it before you butted in. And quite rightly. It's the fruit of months of concentrated effort. Why, oh, it's almost alive. It embodies all the rhythm, all the excitement of the I'll dance. I'll take your word for it. Although it makes me feel quite uncomfortable just to look at it. Oh, I like it. I feel sure that I could do that movement. Ginny just lacks the dancing experience to tackle it, that's all. Shut up. Well, I'm very gratified that someone likes it other than myself. Oh, I love it. Well, uh, I don't think it's so bad. It's ugly. Uh, am I to understand that you're a dancer? Yes. And where may I have the pleasure to come and see you? At the Orient. The Orient. For your information, a rotten tomato will mean that you're dreadful, a cat call that you're mediocre, and a raspberry that you're wonderful. 
Come, Dad. Perhaps you'd care for a card. Oh, thank you. Now you'll know where not to come again. Why not? I suppose one must be grateful for small mercies. You don't write for the papers. You're a good critic. Good morning. Come on, Ireland. mean completely nothing. To the true artist, the applause of the populace is no more than a source of irritation. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Carlton. General Ensemble, very sloppy. Footwork untidy. Hands all over the place. There is room for 150% improvement. Clear? Yes, yes Mr. Carlton. Miss Chapman, if you have ambition to become solo dancer, is it not the way to look sad when everybody else they smile? <laughs> Miss Crawford, what give you the impression you are qualified to laugh at Miss Chapman when every time you do the entrechat, the effort show on your face? Uh, Miss Wilson has not yet learned how to do the entrechat, but she does know how to look as if she is doing one. Miss Irene, uh, you must do something about your hips. You will knock somebody over. Miss Sonia, clumsy. Miss Adams, feeble. Miss Macaulay, indescribable. Miss Pearl, you are comparatively new. Not bad, not good. No rehearsal tomorrow. Not to thank me to thank the management. For me, never enough rehearsal. Good night, mademoiselle. Good night, Good night, Good night Carlton. Carlton. Congratulations, dear. You were sensational. Don't be silly. Oh, not being silly. Not too bad, not too good. It's sensational, nothing less. I'm going out the front way. All right. Coming. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I suppose you've come to apologize for what happened in the art gallery. No. I've come to take you out to supper. Oh, how lovely. You've got a nerve. I know. An iron nerve. I'd like to slap your face. Oh, Ginny, whatever for? You're very welcome. My face is almost immune by now. By now? Oh, do tell us about it. I'll come to supper. Good. I'll come too. Oh. Oh, come on. By the way, what would you have done if we'd said no? I haven't the faintest idea. The possibility hadn't even occurred to me. <laughs> Oh, if it isn't a fine day. It's glorious. My eyes hurt. It must be the sun. You were in that thing last night. <laughs> Was I? Were you? <laughs> Not half. You want me to tell you about it? You never tell me about anything. I'll tell you about this if you like. What's the matter? Fallen in love? Perhaps. Do you mean that, Jenny? Still in bed, well, I never. You're no help to me about the house these days, Ginny. Mother, Ginny's fallen in love. What? Go on, tell her, Ginny. I never said anything about love. Is this really true? Not really. It's not one of those theatrical people, one of those people that hang around the stage door. Mother, don't insult me. Who is it? 
Nobody. The fault was mine never to let you see the light of day. I ought to have known. You're not only my daughter, you're your father's as well. I ought to have known. You do what you like, Jenny Pearl. Life won't be hard on you then, until you grow old like me. Then you'll suffer. You've got the looks now. Go away, have a good time. You'll learn your lesson. It's not for me to teach it to you. I'm only your mother. But don't you bring your paramours round here or I'll break their necks. I'll kill them. And I'll kill you too. Well, that's a promise. <laughs> Jenny, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind me. Something we'll have to understand and put up with. But I don't understand. I never have. Well, Mother was very beautiful. I don't think life with Dad has helped her to bear age gracefully. Oh, dear. And then... I wonder if Mother's ever been in love, ever really let herself go. Jenny, what's it like to be in love? I'll tell you this evening. Ginny, here you are at last. Come in. What an unnatural place. All those stairs. Is that the view you were carrying on about? Yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? You like it? Yes, it's all right. Your enthusiasm overwhelms me. It's pure Whistler. We had a Whistler at the Orient once, but he was far from pure. <laughs> Come and sit down and be comfortable. The kettle's boiling, we can have tea at once. You don't live here, do you? Yes, of course. Why? It's like a second-hand shop. I've never seen such a shocking, untidy place. Don't you like it? I didn't say so, did I? You sleep here too? Occasionally. My bedroom's on the floor below. It's very tidy, English and respectable. I think you'd approve. It's even got a bathtub. Uh, which do you prefer, Indian or China? Not China, and that's certain. I think China tea is terrible, like burnt water. You evidently don't appreciate the East. Uh, no, and I don't appreciate your making with tea either. Not if you make it like my dad. He likes his solid. One for the pot. Ginny. Ginny Pearl. You got my name right, anyhow. You know what I want to say to you, don't you? Don't drown it. I know you're struck on me, if that's what you mean. How do you know? If I want a man to be struck on me, he usually is. Do you want me to be struck on you? Yes, I suppose I do. I adore you. She's here. Jenny? I murder her. Little Jenny Pearl is going to learn her lesson. I know Corentin like the back of my hand. With luck, that young lady will be out on her year tonight. I've never seen the old boy so excited. Oh, shut up, Madge. We all think these things about one another, but we keep them to ourselves. If we've got any decency, that is. Trust you to stick up for your hoity-toity little friend. If you want your ears boxed up... Corentin was asking for you. He instructed you to listen in the corridor, no doubt. Oh, Jenny, what happened? No time to lose. Curtain go up in half hour. Your theatre discipline, horrible. Your dancing, not a bad. It is only for this I give you big solo part in Grand Summer Ballet. Oh, Jimmy! I don't believe it. If you'd only had the courage to listen at the door, you would have heard with your own big ears. What exactly is your relationship with Corentin? One of mutual admiration. Oh, 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 oh. Where is she? Where's who, Mr. Carrington? The young lady, Mademoiselle Jenny Pearl. Where is she? Isn't she here? Idiot! Can you see her? Was she called? Of course she was, like everyone else. 
Oh, does she think she is? Just because I say she got talent, because I tell her she not good and not bad, it go to her head. I tell you, this kind of temperamentals I will not tolerate from nobody, not even from the greatest dancers in the world. I'm happy? Very happy. Do you find my company congenial? In general, I mean. <laughs> you are an ass using those long words. You never answer my questions first time, do you? Often you don't answer them at all. You're so funny when you get pompous. I am very rarely pompous. You just, for some reason, don't like to answer any questions straight. What conclusion have you jumped to now? I'm very hurt. Oh, my. You have a special way of talking to men. You use it on me. I get treated no differently from any of the others. What was that question again? Do you like my company? Yes. Enough to come and live with me? No. I mean... I love you, Morris. Are you proposing to me, darling? Oh, come, Ginny. I'm an artist. I... I don't understand. Freedom is worth more than even success to an artist. It is life's blood. The great enemy of creation is domesticity. Regular meals, children, all the meager problems of life, all the things that interrupt a train of thought. An artist needs love like anyone else, but he can't. He mustn't be a slave to it. It must be a background to his existence. I've always wanted to spend part of my life wandering with no destination and no sense of time. Among the Alps or the high Sierras of Spain, just drinking in the it is of the earth. And do you want me to carry the paint box? Is that it? Oh, don't anger me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. What do you think of me now? Do you really want to know? Go on. I think you're a silly little idiot who doesn't recognize a golden opportunity when she sees it. I told my sister you were the rudest man I ever met. Sister? I didn't know you had a sister. She's a cripple. The trouble is... The trouble is, whatever you say, whatever I say, I love you desperately. Morris. Please forgive me. I can be so beastly. I don't really mean it. At least I don't think I do. I don't mind. points. One, two, three. Stop! What are you thinking? Huh? What are you thinking? To repay to me the confidence like this way. Go to your place. Your place in the chorus where Miss Wilson used to dance. Miss Wilson make it a solo dance. You are fifth butterfly. I don't care. I've got something much better you can't take away from me. What's this, you mumbling? Nothing. From the beginning. One, two. Graceful, graceful. Uh, Miss Pearl, what do you make with your hands? Like bananas. What for you grin like the Mona Lisa? I show you grin. I make you work if I keep you here all night. I make you work till you drop dead with fatigue. Get on with my own work. I'm 
not interfering with you. It's absolutely maddening having someone else in the room working in an entirely different medium and doing it superb. If you did it badly, I wouldn't mind so much. What a funny chap you are, Avery. You don't disturb me. Go away! Shh! You wait, Jenny. Oh, Jenny, you have moved. Oh, haven't you finished yet, Morris? Let's have a look first. Well, I... I don't think... The just sketch is just something for me to work on, you know. Castleton, will you go away? Goodbye, Jenny. I wish I could think of something dignified and forgiving to say, but I know it would only infuriate Morris all the more. I do think you're bad-tempered. Oh, he gets on my nerves sometimes. You're being unreasonable. Jenny, please don't criticize. You've taken to it lately. It's very unattractive. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I don't know what's the matter with me. Forgive me? Of course. If you only knew what it means for Ginny Pearl to be the soppy one. Darling. Can I see your work? No, it's not finished yet. Oh, please. All right. Well, it's jolly fine, Morris. It's not very like me, is it? No. No, it isn't like you at all. It's dead like so much putty. How dare Castleton come in here? For half an hour, that's all. And get you in a few lines when I can't begin to do it after three weeks' hard work. How dare he? What's he know about you? The real you? Nothing at all. But what do I do? Something not fit to be put on top of a wedding cake. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, Morris, if you'd only not walk up and down. You know it always makes me want to laugh. I don't think you care about me at all. What I do, whether my work's successful or not. What's the good of being in love? I can't work, he's helping you. I sometimes wish I'd never met you. How dare you say things like that? You're no more than a pampered, selfish weakling. Artist, indeed. I'm an artist, too. I made a sacrifice for you and lost the opportunity of a lifetime. Let me tell you something, Morris Avery. You're not even worthy of friendship. Until you're worthy of friendship, you're certainly not worthy of love. Not even a poor ballet dancer's love. I hope you'll find your room comfortable, Mr. Truella. Thank you, Mrs. Rayburn. Do you expect to be in London long? Well, that depends on the lawyers and probate and a lot of other things I don't know very much about. I'm executor, they call it, of a will. A friend? No, a cousin. I never saw him but once in my life. Oh. Well, now you're here, my husband will have to show you around the town. Oh, that's very kind of you. I've never been outside Cornwall before. I expect you miss it. Well, it doesn't pay to leave a farm for long. Cows and pigs don't take very much account of lawyers talking. No, I suppose not. Oh, that must be Ginny. She's my eldest. Oh, I didn't know you had two daughters, Mrs. Raven. Oh, yes. Hello. Ginny, this is our new lodger, Mr. Zachary Truella. How do you do, Miss Raven? My name's Pearl. Pearl? Ginny Pearl. It's the name I go under at the Orient. Where's Dad? Round the corner. Thanks, Mum. Orient? I'm afraid I don't understand you, Miss Pearl. Haven't you ever heard of the Orient? No, I never have. It's a theatre. Oh. Ginny's in the ballet. Ballet? Don't you like the ballet? I'm afraid I don't understand that either. I'm a stranger, you see. <laughs> My goodness, you are. Well, ballet is, um... Well, it's a lot of dancers dancing on a stage to an orchestra. Oh, I see. Mostly it's about some sort of fairy tale, like, uh, Well, like the one we're doing about a king and a dancer called Salome. But that's a story out of the Bible, Miss Pearl. The Bible? Is it? Well, I always thought it was Corrington's idea. Ginny. Excuse me, Mr. Truella. Hush, hush, hush. Charlie, be quiet. Yeah, where's the new lodger? I must pay my no, respects. No, not now, Charlie. Now, you go along after me. Go on. Nah. Go on, Charlie. Up to bed. All right. Better get on with your supper, I think, Miss Pearl. It's getting cold. And a single seat, please. Not too near the front. Number 14, row 4. Two to the shore.
can't help thinking you're pretty rude to Ginny. I don't know why she puts up with it. When was I rude to her? Well, the other day, for instance, when you were sculpting. Oh, yes, I heard all about it. Frank, if you knew how awful it was to model a girl you're in love with, you don't seem to see her as passionately as I feel an artist should. And even if you do manage to get a likeness, it all seems so painfully inadequate. You can't catch the gold of their hair, the subtleties of expression, those deep, teasing, tantalizing eyes. It's impossible. I thought Ginny was doing this. Yes, so did I. What happened? Well, I don't know the details exactly. Oh, yes, you do. I know you. Frank, you annoy me. What happened? Well, it's not nearly so serious as your turn implies. That's for me to decide. That day we went out in the river. She should have been at rehearsal. But I can't see what it's got to do with you. She doesn't mind at all, not at all. No, doesn't she? No. Oh, it's all quite all right. I shall go and apologize very nicely afterwards. Go down to my bended knee, if you insist. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, for heaven's sake, Frank, she honestly doesn't mind. Stop treating me as though you were my nanny. <laughs> don't sulk. Come on, let's go and have a drink. Are you going to marry her? What an extraordinary question. Seems perfectly ordinary to me. It's you who are extraordinary. You know my views on marriage. It cramps the style of any self-respecting artist. Domesticity is the enemy of art. What a profoundly silly remark. It happens to be true. I'm going away. Where to? Portugal, Spain, Italy, somewhere. Does Ginny know? I haven't asked her yet. Asked her? Is she going to? Well, of course. You're a lunatic. There's a large percentage of lunacy in every creative artist. If I stay here, I shall lose my temper. I should love to see that, Frank. You know, I would too. I'd love not to know what I was doing, then I might cheerfully break your neck. Nice of you. Good night, Jenny. We'll see you tomorrow. You have a very cruel tongue. Your cruelty is not confined to your tongue. I'm very sorry and mortified. You don't realize how dreadful it is to be torn between one's work and love. I, I thought that was exclusively a woman's problem. But artists have no sex in their working, Jenny. At least they shouldn't have. That's just the trouble. You don't think of me in the middle of a pirouette. You'd fall over. You flatter yourself. <laughs> You'd totter anyway. Oh, come on, be generous. It's just the same with me. I don't think of you when I'm working. But if you're lying there with your golden hair all over the place, with your eyes closed, your arms are... You just can't concentrate. That's understandable, isn't it? I think you're far more beautiful than the Venus de Milo. Don't be ridiculous. No, it's not so ridiculous as you think. At least you've got arms and legs. You're incorrigible. I'm glad you think so. I'm sorry you lost your solo number, Ginny. So am I. Will you forgive me? Morris. Yes, darling. Where can we go for supper? Good evening, Miss Pearl. Good morning is more like it. I didn't expect to find you up. Couldn't you sleep? Of course, it's not the same as the farm. I went to the Orient tonight. Did you now? Well, did you like it? Yes, I thought it was very, very pretty. 
But you didn't like it. Well, I liked it well enough, but I don't suppose I understood it. You like not understanding things, don't you? I don't like pretending to understand something when I don't. Well, that's a change, anyway. What, Mr. Truella? I thought the dancing part was very pretty. It was the people. What people? Men. Old men, some of them. Peeping and prying like. Well, you paid for their seats, silly. I suppose there's a lot I don't like about townsfolk. Well, I don't know country folk, so I can't say. Well, it doesn't matter so much about people in the country. There aren't so many of them, you see. From the end of my big meadow, I can look out one way right over the sea and out over the croft the other. I suppose you'd call that moorland up here. Then I can look away right over my own land to the hills by South Providence without seeing a single house but my own. Lonely? No, quiet. Just quiet and peaceful. Nothing but the sea and the sky and the land. Mm, it sounds nice. Well, I must get my beauty sleep. Good night. Good night, Miss Pearl. Miss Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. Yes, very happy. Do you mind not dancing for us? Just as well. I'm what you would describe as a very unnatural dancer. Happy birthday, Jenny. Thank you, Buzz. Oh, look, there's Morris. I don't think Morris knows the meaning of the word depression. Doesn't he, though? I think he gets very depressed sometimes. Oh, it's never more than a passing mood. Tell me, dear Ginny, are you very fond of Morris? Fond of him? I love him. Really love him? Of course. But would you get over it if... If what? Well, if Morris was a disappointment, for instance, if he were to go away quite suddenly. Oh, don't look so frightened, Ginny. He's not going to, as far as I know, nor is he likely to. But if, would it upset your life? Please, Ginny. Please don't cry, Ginny, please. I'm a clumsy idiot. Forget what I said. Please go away. Ginny, I'm... Ginny, marry me. And show your forgiving nature. Fuzz, you are hateful. But you are funny. You're the only one I don't want to laugh at, and you always do. Fuzz, doesn't anybody laugh at you, only me? <laughs> Very rarely. Ginny, are we friends again? Of course, but don't make jokes like that again. Promise? I promise. Ginny, they're playing the Eaton Birding song. We mustn't miss any of it. so much. I wish tonight would never end. Why does everything lovely always have to end? I've got a present for you. Morris, what a wonderful surprise. You have given me such a lovely birthday. Thank you. I, 
I suppose you feel very responsible now. Oh, I'm too sleepy to feel anything very much. Too sleepy to make decisions? What decisions? I, um, I have to go away, Ginny. I... Go away? Where? Now, listen, darling, I'll tell you everything. It's my uncle. He's died. He's left me some money. And my aunt, well, she needs me to look after her. But where? Where are you going? To Spain. Seville, I must. Yes, very pretty. Yes, yes, I suppose I'm pretty lucky there. You'll take your paints, of course. I might. I don't believe a word of it. Well, that's comforting, Jenny. It shows you're getting to know me very well. Your uncle hasn't died at all. You're wrong there, darling. I haven't got an uncle. And you're still going? Yes. Oh, don't you understand, Jenny? I'm asking you once and for all to come away with me. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with us. We're both so clever with our tongues. I know I love you, and yet I can't help behaving anyhow, as if you were just any girl. I know you love me, and you have a way of treating me like a stage door Johnny. We seem to be afraid of each other. What can I do about it? Come with me, away from civilization. It's our only chance. Away from fathers, away from your friends in the chorus, away from your family. But it would break my mother's heart if I went with you. But I'm in love with you, Ginny. Not your family, or current, or your background. Oh, darling, you're only pretending to be offended. It's the easiest way out for you. Please listen to me, please, I need you. Morris, I want to go with you. Oh, darling. But I wonder if I dare. Yes, of course you dare. Don't force me. All right, I won't say another word. Please don't be annoyed. Please. I just want time. I, I must... Well, I must think it over. If you think it over, you won't come and I'll lose you forever. Why do you say that? I just know it. You haven't a family. You haven't a sister. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll mention it again. Oh, Morris. I do love you so. Then come with me. Look, let's take this handsome. It can take us anywhere. Anywhere in the world. I can take you home. Wishes it to be. Home, Morris. Home. Good morning. Good morning, Ginny. Is that ours? Yeah. Here she is. Look at the time. Nice way to carry on, I will say. Raven, I wonder you dare show your face coming home at this hour of the morning. I'm ashamed of you. Oh, leave her alone, Mother. She's tired. Where were you last night? You know where she was, the Cobham Garden Bowl. I mean afterwards. There was no afterwards. I came straight home. Now, don't you lie to me, my girl. Who was that brought you home? Look here, Ginny. I won't have these goings on, and that's all about it. Wherever you were, you weren't here at home where you ought to have been. And shall be as long as you live with me. I think you're being a bit odd on that, Flo. What you think is neither here nor there. I've put up with your interference long enough. I've had just about enough. I'm off. Off? You're not going to leave home? Aren't I? Who says so? I'm going now. Ginny, come back here at once. There, now you have torn it. Morris. 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 First. Hello. What are you doing here, Jenny? Where's Morris? He's gone away. Gone away? He said he wasn't going. 
He's gone to Spain. Yes. I didn't see him. He, he must have come home, changed, packed something, has gone away at once. But why, Fuzz? Why? I, I don't know. He did leave a note, but I'm afraid it doesn't explain very much. You didn't quarrel with him, did you, Ginny? No. No, I didn't quarrel with him. What's in the note? Dear Castleton, when you get this, I shall be on my way to Spain via Paris. Things here seem to be rather a muddle, and I'm beginning to feel I'd be much better out of it. I haven't written to Ginny, but I know she'll understand. Don't think me too heartless, Fuzz, and let me know that Ginny is all right. Yours, Morris. Is that all? Yes, that's all. What'll you do now, Jenny? How should I know? It was a foolish question. I wish you'd marry me. Faz, I believe you do. Of course I do. Would you marry me? No. No, I couldn't. I think if I saw you or any of his friends again, I just hate you. Art and Jack want to take us out to supper tonight. Aren't you going out with Morris? No. No, why not? He's gone away. Gone away? Oh, don't keep repeating everything I say. A bit sudden, wasn't it? You've blacked your nose, Madge Wilson. Have I? Where? Well, poking it into other people's business. He seemed so fond of you, too. You only met him once. Even so, it was obvious you were absolutely mad about one another. It's a pity he had to leave you. He hasn't left me. He's just gone away for a few weeks. I always said it wouldn't last. Oh, shut up about it, Madge. But, Maudie, it seems to me so funny. You know how Ginny always thought she knew everything before she got struck in a fellow herself. She isn't so much cleverer than the rest of us, after all. Don't take any notice of her, Ginny. Always making mischief. Well, I'm tired of her always thinking she knows better than anyone else without being told off. Told off? Who, by you, you two-faced Mrs. Big Mouth? <laughs> You're the same in this dressing room, every one of you. I wonder you haven't gone horse-talking me to pieces, whispering and mumbling in corners. And look at you. Married women. And there's not a girl in this dressing room whose husband can afford to keep her. Husbands, why, they know better than a lot of old case I'll keepers. I'll beginners, girls. I wish they'd hurry up. Devilish waiting out here. Here's someone. Good evening, boys. Where's Ginny? I don't think she's coming, Jack. She don't feel quite herself tonight. Oh, not ill, is she? Oh, no, just a bit upset. You know how she is. I booked the table in the alcove, just as you said. Dear Arthur. Where shall we go? Oh, can I come too? Excuse my bluntness, Jack. No. Already, oh, Arthur, I think you're being thoroughly unreasonable. We had arranged in the first place that, that you... you were going with Jenny Pearl. Good night, dear fellow. Oh, um, I may not be back until, uh, well, rather late. Oh. Uh, how are you this evening? Good night. Oh. Oh, hello, dear. Anyone left inside? I'm sorry about tonight. Why? I mean, about your not feeling very well. I mean, you just told me. Oh, I'm all right. Oh, anyone left inside? Uh, Madge Wilson. Has she gone home? What's the matter with me? Oh, well, you're perfect, but well, you wouldn't come and have dinner alone with me. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, you, 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 you mean you would? Why not? Oh, handsome! Handsome! Oh, hello, Mum. Where's Ginny? Didn't she come home last night? Oh, she stayed with a friend of mine. Oh, I feel awful. Well, here's your tea. Mm. That Ginny Pearl will come to no good one of these days. You mark my words if she won't. So there you are. Well? Well, what? What happened to you? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing you need hear about. Oh, come on, tell. Wouldn't you like to know? Irene Dale, you make me sick. Well, 
Oh, I like that. I haven't done anything wrong. No, but you'd like to be quite certain I had. Oh, well, if you're going to carry because on... because you behave any old how, you like to think everyone else does. You shut up, Ginny Pearl. You know very well my mother wouldn't allow me to do anything. Your mother. As long as she's got half a bottle of gin, she doesn't mind what you do. Don't you well, dare! Well, you're satisfied. You and your sort are only happy when you've got something dirty to talk about. But you're not going to talk about me, because you're not going to get the chance. When did this come? Last night. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do without her. It's so sudden. Funny how people can be alive one minute and dead the next. No reason behind it. Amazing. Well, come on, let's get on with putting these things away. You know how she hated to see anyone doing nothing. She She's on to me about that for about 30 years. We'll be married 25 years come next July. Of course, we've been engaged five years before that. I wonder what'll happen to us now. Don't ask me, dear. Don't ask me. When the last thing she said was for you to look after May, she said you was the only one capable of it. She never trusted me right to the end, she didn't. <laughs> dear old Florida. She also said it was a pity you was pretty. She said it was a pity you were a little girl. Of course, her mind was wandering then. I could make her a tale of it. She'd never have said them things in her right senses. She said she wished you'd settle down. I stuck up for you. Ginny's doing all right, I said. I'll keep my eye on her, I said. Oh, well. I'm going to go and see old Truella about that rent. Uh, come along. Be good. Maisie? Hmm? May, where would you live if we had to give up this house? Couldn't I live with you? No. I suppose I couldn't. Oh, May. Darling, May. Of course you can live with me. I'll look after you. I really will. There you are, Mr. Raven. I think you'll find that's the correct amount. Only just. I'm very sorry to be leaving you. No, I ask you to say so. I'm afraid the last two or three weeks haven't been too comfortable for you, Mr. Treweller. Oh, don't apologize. Never mind. Let's go and have a drink. Oh, no. Of course, I forgot you don't, do you? Pity. Never mind. I think I'll, um... I'll, uh... Yes, I'll be over at the Masons if anyone wants me. Which is unlikely. You sound more like your mother every day. There's her apron. Never even gone to the wash. Ginny. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking. I don't want to leave this place. Then you'll have to stay on by yourself. Me and May are clearing out. There's daughters for you. Comes of being women, I suppose. Oh, well. So long, Mr. Torella. Miss Ginny. Hello. Why are you going away? I hate this place now. I can understand that. Can you? There are some things I understand well enough. Unhappiness is one of them. Are you unhappy? I know you are. Well, it's only natural, isn't it, with Mother gone? Yes. Let me take you home to Cornwall. You and your sister May. There's peace and quiet there, and a garden where you and your sister could sit all day long, if you'd mind to. It would be nice, Mr. Truella, but there are the fairs and everything. I'm asking you to marry me, Miss Jenny. Now, don't be in a hurry to say no. I'm not in a hurry to say it. But, no, I couldn't. It wouldn't be fair. To you? To you. I'm not your kind. You mean those other fellows that have been? Well, that's one thing. But that's all over and done with. Yes. I'm not struck on you. You know that, don't you? No. But you might be sometime. I love you, Jenny. And besides, there's the farm. It's my own, you know. You wouldn't be wanting ever again, either of you. You mean you'd want to take May too? Aye. No, it's wrong. I know it's wrong. Is that your answer? It's 
getting dark, I'd better light the gas. You know what I promised your mum? If we don't like it in Cornwall, Dad, we'll be back. Uh, look after Mr. Truella. They're all I've got. Goodbye, Mr. Raven. Bye, Dad! Everything prepared? Yes, Mistress Truella. Best linen, I trust. Oh, yes, Mistress. Warm the bricks for their feet. It's a cold, rough night. It's already been done, Mistress Truella. What have you placed on the table, Martha? Tabby de am, and pastries, and saffron cake, and cream fresh from the cow. That's right. Everything must be of the very best. It isn't every day that my only son brings back a bride. I only wish he'd been marrying some good Cornish girl. Anybody from the town, I wouldn't trust them. Godless lot. Open the door, Daniel. Hurry up to the kitchen, Martha. Yes. Mother. This is the missus, Mother. Welcome, my dear. And this is her sister, May. What do you think of Cornwall? I think it's very dark. Good night, Good night, Good night Mistress Joanne. Good night. You'll be wanting to go to bed. Yes, I suppose we ought. I put May in the room next to yours. Come, I'll show you. Inside, get a bite of breakfast. After all, I didn't ask you to get up at this hour. I know. I thought as I'd been here a week, it was high time I took an interest in things. After all, I'm your wife. I'm surprised you realize it. What do you mean by that? Don't you go carrying on like that, oh dear. You was glad enough to marry me when I asked you. Don't you be fighting shy of me when I love you fit to die. That isn't fair, old man. Isn't it time for breakfast? Too good for her. Mother, am I handsome? A fine, open face. Just like your father. The best husband a girl could wish for. I can't make it out. I can't make it out. Your father used to rule this house with a rod of iron. I don't remember, father. When I was a girl, and my eyes and mind used to wander to ungodly things, he was quick to notice it. And my shame was brought home to me with a righteous and unrelenting tongue. Did you love him, mother? He was my husband. It isn't showing much respect to the dear Lord to be trooping out a chapel like a couple of great bullocks while holy words are still being uttered. I don't go to chapel to be stared at. Oh, and you don't go to pray, neither. You go because you have to. You go because I make you go. You leave her alone. No doubt you're to blame, leading her into the ways of unrighteousness. Do you want your face slapped? Don't you try any of your city tricks here, my dear, or I'll take a stick to you. He wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? You're still my wife, and don't you be forgetting it, and you'll go on being my wife till the day you die. I'll never let you go, so just you be careful. I've tamed wilder animals than you on this farm. Good night. Are you a friend of Zachary Tuella's? No. On business, then? No. You're from the insurance, I dare say. No. Whoa! You're fine, Buckin, down along. I see, thank you. 
Tis a grey house where the road bends down to the sea. Tisn't the police! No! Come up, boy. <laughs> what a curious room. <laughs> it's the Baron's kitchen from Cinderella. And where is the Baron? He's gone to chapel with his mother, thank goodness. Sit down first. Where's your sister? She's upstairs resting. <laughs> We've got the whole house to ourselves. Good. Tell me about yourself, Jenny. What's it like down here? Well, it's very quiet. But I like it. How is dear old London? Too big, but wonderful. Don't you miss it, Ginny? Just a little bit? I miss quite a lot of things. Quite a lot. A friend of yours was asking about you. Play something, Fuzz. Nobody ever uses it, except for him's. Shame enough you can't come to chapel on the Sabbath without running into the Lord's wrath, singing and dancing. This is an old friend of mine, Frank Castleton. Fuzz, this is my husband. How do you do, sir? I'm well enough, thank you. You come far? From London. That's a poor sort of a place. I was there myself once, but I didn't think very much of it. You talk a lot of rot. As if you could know anything about London. I know enough about it to hate it. Oh, come, Mr. Trueller. You were lucky enough to find Ginny there. I don't think you ought to think too badly of London. Oh, you don't, don't you? You'll stay to tea, Fuzz. Not today, thank you, Jenny. I think I'd better be off and see that my rooms are all right. Where are you staying? At the one and all in. Good day, Mr. Truella. this fella? Friend of mine. Did he ever come courting you? Of course not. You don't think all men are like you, do you? Well, if he's only a friend, what does he want down here? Came down to see me. What's so funny about that? Look here, missus, don't you go giving village tongues a start by kicking up a rig with that great cockney. Who cares about the village? I do. You see, Fuzz, I always knew what I wanted when I was quite young. I wanted to go on the stage, so I went. Yes, you had such enormous gifts. I had imagined you staying in the theatre all your life. If you'd married me, I would have encouraged you. Dear Fuzz. You've never once asked me about Morris. I don't want you to tell me anything. Any particular reason? I don't want to be given an opportunity of regretting anything. Is it as bad as all that? No. What do you mean by carrying my missus off for wagging tongues, you great overgrown cockney? What do you mean by it? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Who do you think I am, your servant? I don't think you're feeling too well, Mr. Truella. heal the blindness of my own family. My sister is the kindest, sweetest person in the world, and I won't have you talking about her like that. I caught her lingering at the roadside with her lover, 
Her eyes were full of sin and waywardness. Fancy being married to a woman who surrendered her heart to the foul dictates of the flesh and the devil. If you knew how unhappy you've made her with your horrid insinuating looks and your filthy manners, I wish she'd never married you. The day will come, Miss May, when a terrible punishment will be meted out to all earthly sinners. Now what's the matter? I was too quick, that's all. Too quick? If I hadn't been so straight out, I might have trapped you. Well, it's too late. I've sent him away. Why? Because I feel ashamed for any friend of mine to see what kind of man I'm married to. Come on, May. Witch! Jezebel! Tis well I'm a saved man or I might murder you! I can't think why you don't go bathing every day. It would only cause trouble. There's somebody coming along the sands. Where? Just a speck. You can see a way. I wonder who it is. I don't remember seeing anyone on this beach before. Nor can I. It's a man. Is it? What a long line of footsteps there'll be when he's gone by. It is a man. I think I know who it is. I don't think we stay here. I was just thinking, seeing I gotta go into Penzance, is there anything I can get you, Ginny? No, thanks. Nothing I want. May? Well, I have run out of red wool. May. Surely you can do without it. Oh, why should she do without it? I remember the dark red. There was a man down at Truinet this morning asking about the coast around here. Turned out he was a painter. Painter, eh? What next, I wonder? Mm, funny, some folk can't find nothing better to do than copy nature on canvas. Wicked, I call it. I don't know, Mother. I've seen some very nice painting in my time. If you want to get there before dark, you should be off, Zachary. Ah, <laughs> Mother's always right. night for Zachary to be out. I'm right glad the rain has stopped now. It's nice and warm in here. I was meaning to tell you that when he gets back, he'll be wet through. Make him take his socks off and wring them out. You're the only one he listens to. It's your duty. Or else he'll catch his death of cold. We don't want that. Jenny, did you hear me? She's very tired. I don't know why, I'm sure. Don't you understand? I'm asking you once and for all to come away with me. I know I love you, and yet I can't help behaving anyhow. I know you love me. Come with me, away from civilization. It's our only chance. Look, there's a hansom. It can take us anywhere, anywhere in the world. Or it can take you home. Which is it to be? Home, Morris. Home. What was that? Ah, the wind plays strange tricks on us in the stormy season. Witch! Jezebel! There's no cause for fear if you faith. Only the godless faint when the wind plays its tricks. Ah, it's the weight of her sins that gives her fear. She's crazed with her own guilt and despairs. I've seen many go like that. It's not true! Let you go to bed and let her be a lesson to you. Fickle, wanton woman.
Not in bed yet. You're a couple of late birds, I must say. Well, it's gone ten o'clock. I was comforting May. The wind was playing its tricks. Well, I'm glad you're still up. I brought your wool, May. I hope it's the right colour. Thank you. I've got a bracelet for Jenny. I think I'll take it up to her now and surprise her with it. She's not in her room. Where is she? She's not up there. Where is she? Where is she? She went up. Where? I, I don't know. There's no knowing what devilry folks get up to when the evil in their heart makes them crazed in the foul weather. Crazed? She ran out of the house, crazed. She's not crazed. If she went out into the night, she had a reason for it. Mother, why should she go out into the darkness where she can't be seen by righteous eyes if she hadn't a reason? Ginny, I know everything. What about? Fuzz told me. Oh. Faz is the best friend either of us ever had. He warned me not to be a fool. He warned me not to go away at the time. Why didn't you wait for me? I was a foolish, conceited, headstrong idiot. How nice of you to spare me the trouble of telling you. How is Spain? Desolate without you. I destroyed all the pictures I did there. Did you really go? Yes. I believe you. Thank you. And I did destroy the pictures. I'd given up lying. Oh, darling, what a pity. You won't be quite the same now. The Morris I knew was a weak, lovable, uncontrollable man. He wanted me to help him, and I was willing to. Unfortunately, he was. Headstrong, foolish, conceited, and impatient as well. That was the Morris you knew. And loved. Now then, for the last time, where is she? <coughs> this is what I always meant, Ginny. For the first time in our lives, we're alone. There's nothing between us. We're talking straight to one another without insinuation or, or defense or anything. Here under the moon and by the side of a clean sea, chilled by a clean cold wind. I love you more than anything in the world, Ginny Pearl. I love you infinitely more than I have before. Even if I felt as you do, I could no longer say so. Oh, poor Morris. The first time in our lives we are not alone. There are three of us. You, me, and my husband. It's my duty to stay with him for as long as I live. I should have come with you when you first asked me. Darling, let me take you away from here. Ginny! 